Hey everybody and welcome back to the Career A Day segment where we're highlighting some jobs that are in high demand and telling you how you can get one of those jobs. With me now is Sergeant Chris Carpenter and he is the head of the 911 Communications. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yes ma'am, my pleasure. Of course, so let's go ahead and get started. If somebody wants to become a dispatcher, how do they do that? What does that look like? Well, the first step would be to go to the City of San Angelo uh, webpage. They can put in an application through there. Uh, they can also go through the Workforce Solutions uh, mm -hmm. because they share our uh, uh, job announcements. Okay. Or they gather that from the uh, City of San Angelo website. They can go to Indeed. They can go to Monster. I've seen the applications come through uh, many different job uh, platforms. Okay. So, um Next thing is education. Do you know, I'm sure it asks on the application, do you have to have a high school diploma? Do you have to have a college degree? Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, we are also a uh, licensed certified position like police officers. Uh, they are classified as first responders. So we have to meet the uh, TCO requirements like police officers. So the minimum education is a, a high school diploma or a GED. Okay. Uh, they don't have to have a college degree or anything. So that's the minimum. Okay. So they're going to get some on-the-job training, of course. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What does that look like? Uh, once a person passes the uh, the background, the polygraph, the psychological, the physical, um, the hearing tests and stuff, uh, they will get on-the-job training. They will get online training uh, that the state requires. And uh, the training is about six months until they're signed off. And then... Uh, they're a full-time dispatcher. Uh, once we get close to a year, mm -hmm. then we will get them to take the state test, which will actually earn them their uh, uh, state license. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, for those who may not understand, can you kind of explain the job? And it's a, it's a pretty high stress situation. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, and then, like I mentioned, they are first responders. Mm -hmm. uh, that recently came about a year ago the, where the Texas became or classified dispatchers as first responders. Uh, when that phone rings, you don't really know what's on the other end of that phone until you pick it up and start talking to the person. Uh, you're going to be answering 911 calls. You're going to be answering non-emergency calls. Uh, you'll be dealing with people on what could be considered the worst day of their life. Um, or you'll be dealing with uh, people that have witnessed a wreck or mm. they uh, saw a power line fall down or whatever. We receive all sorts of phone calls. We are also the 911 answering point for all of Tom Green County. Oh, okay. So anytime you're in Tom Green County, you dial 911, it comes to our station or our communication center first. And depending on the questions or the answers to the questions, then we decide whether uh, it needs to go over to the sheriff's office for law enforcement response or if we need to see, send medics out into the county, or if we just send fire personnel or police personnel within the city. Okay, so because of that, that high stress, that, that extreme, you know, you gotta be ready to respond and to get the, that information, that's why you have such a thorough vetting process. Yes, ma'am. When it comes to the background check and all of that. Yes, ma'am. Okay, perfect. So when we're looking at a salary, what are kind of the ranges, say we're starting out, we're learning, and then, you know, can people make this a career? Yes, ma'am, they can. Uh, I've got a dispatcher It's uh, fixing to hit her 25th year. Uh, she is one of my shift supervisors, so that's the highest that you can attain as a civilian for the dispatch department is a uh, shift supervisor. Uh, once you start out, uh, the starting salary is 31868 a year. Mm -hmm. It is broken down into an hourly rate, which is about 1532 I know that's what a lot of people look at, what's my hourly yeah. rate. <laughs> so it's 1532 an hour. Um, if we're ever shorthanded, uh, there's some overtime that can be um, uh, obtained through this position. So, you know, you're looking at time and a half, about 23 inch and change, give or take, uh, an hour when there's overtime. Um, once you get your cert state certification mm -hmm. or state license, then your salary goes up to 34700 roughly around there, which means your hourly rate will jump up as well. I think it's uh, like sixteen ninety something okay. an hour. Uh, at the end of your third year or at the beginning of your third year and fifth year um, anniversary, at least at the beginning of that fiscal year, uh, you'll get a $1,500 increase of what your pay is at that time. Okay, so, so there are some chances for increases to move up, correct? Things like that, right? If 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 there are no city increases for civilian employees from year one through year five, 
you go from 31868 to roughly 38,000 a year. Okay. I apologize, I don't have those numbers all memorized <laughs> yet. So you, you're, you're looking at almost about a six to a $7,000 increase within five years. Oh, okay. And then if you become a supervisor, then there's a different pay rate for the supervisors. It is hard to move up uh, in through the ranks. It's not one of those, you know, like, a, you know, other places where you can go from employee to assistant manager to manager and all that other stuff. Uh, but there's three uh, supervisor positions, one for each shift that we oh. have, and that's the highest that you can obtain. Gotcha, gotcha. So how in demand is is a dispatcher? Can can somebody start the process and, and, and get going right now? It, it does, you, you can come straight in the door through the vetting process like you mentioned. Um, it's, it's one of those jobs that is a job that you've never had before. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's uh, it, like I explained to a lot of applicants, it's like finding those diamonds in the rough. Mm. We can explain the job, we can uh, get you ready for the job, but until you sit in that chair, start answering the phones, you don't know if that job's for you. So we do have a, a very active revolving door at the beginning mm -hmm. of training because until they start answering the phones, they'll, they don't know. Right. And if the training goes well through the first four weeks and stuff, our percentages of having a good dispatcher increase. Uh, so it's just trying to find those people within the first few weeks. And uh, it's, it's kind of a nationwide trend just due to the stress of the job, whether that job's for them or not, that a lot of call centers have a hard time getting a fully staffed call center. And uh, we are actively hiring right now. In fact, we just closed the announcement. We've got about 10 applicants through the process right now. Um, whether they make it through the background or not, whether the job's for them or not, will depend on when we open that job announcement again. But I'm thinking probably mid-February, maybe the end of February, we'll put another announcement out. Okay, great. So if somebody wants to get a hold of you, if they have questions or kind of want to start the process, how do they do that? Uh, they can email me. Uh, it's chris.carpenter at sanangelopolice.org. Uh, if they uh, if they go to the web city website, there's a full description of the job. Okay. And why it, what the minimum requirements are, what the minimum standards are, and uh, what it takes to be accepted as a dispatcher. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming on and telling us a little bit about it. Yes, ma'am. My pleasure. Of course, and we will see you next time on the Career a Day segment.